Hoff as their general manager and Mark Trestman as their head coach. Justin, interesting to listen to uh, President Michael Copeland explain the process of how they arrived at POP. There's been lots of questions about the timing of the hiring. There have been, but it made sense when he talked about it at the press conference that he did not talk to Jim Pop until Jim Barker was relieved of his duties, and Pop would not talk to him until there was actually a vacant job open, and I believe what those men were saying, and in terms of the combo that they landed, probably best case scenario in terms of who's available. I, I think there are still some questions of the timing. It, honestly, to me, it felt uh, there was a little bit of a revisionist history from Copeland. I think if you've decided that Jim Pop is your best candidate, you've talked to him early in the process, then why not move forward with that? Why go through the, the effort to talk to all these other American guys? Uh, Copeland was pretty adamant that he didn't offer anyone else the job. That's been widely reported that there were a couple of American names that turned uh, the Argos down. That said, I think your point is well taken, which is if, you, if, the, if the Argos had started the process uh, and ended up with Pop and Trustman as their two, um, their head coach and their general manager, I think people would have been fine with that. I think at the end of the day, it's probably worked out just fine. The question only is about the timing. And why not go out and see what else is out there, even if you knew Pop was the number one guy? In football, they talk about competition being the best for the team in terms of players wanting to compete for a number one job and coming out with it and earning it, not just it being handed down. So to me, it makes sense to go out, see what the landscape is like, knowing you have a favorite. We're going to have to agree to disagree about this one. That's fine. The other interesting news out of this press conference was Mark uh, Tressman naming Ricky Ray as his starter coming into camp. Tressman said uh, that he hasn't really washed Ray in, since he's been out of the league, but believes that installing him as the uh, starter coming into camp is, is the right way to go. I think that was a bit of a surprise. It certainly was, but what it does is set the tone for the team right off the bat, day one for Mark Tressman. They know who the leader is. They know who the starting quarterback is going to be. And Tressman has a history of being successful with quarterbacks in their upper years. In Oakland, Rich Gannon had an MVP season at 37. Anthony Calvillo had all those great years in his late 30s when Tressman was obviously his coach. And Tressman has seen Ricky Ray play before at a high level in the CFL, so he must believe he can get him back there. Well, and I think this is, it goes to show you, Tressman, I think, will make quick decisions, is an, is an authoritative guy, talking to some of the players that were here for the announcement, instant credibility walking into the room, and he's already, on the first day, put his stamp on the Toronto Argonauts. Ultimately, I think that's probably a good thing. Certainly, it shows that he has a plan and he wants to execute it.